Hunter, mate, we'll start with the Pacific Ground stuff. You've got Samoan flag on your jersey. I know you're, you're a Wallaby, you're an Aussie now, but um, proud Samoan heritage. What does it mean to you playing with that symbol on your jersey in Pacific Ground? Yeah, uh, it means a lot to me, not just me as well, but all the Pacific Island boys in this team. And for us to play for our people back home and our family means a lot to wear the Samoan flag on our, on our jerseys for the weekend. And what about the, the broader representation now in the competition with Moana Pacifica, and Fiji and Drua? Um, you know, the players from those heritages in those countries have been involved in Super Rugby for a long time, but to have actual teams, it's pretty significant. Yeah, for sure. Now it's good for the Pacific Islanders to bring those kind of teams in and show their, where they are and what they deserve to be uh, to be played at and show a lot of talent there. Yeah. What do you make of the draw this weekend, mate? They had a, a pretty rousing win uh, over the Rebels after a couple of um, tough games to start the season. There's, they're always a side, no matter what's going on, you've got to be a little bit wary of. Yeah, nah, just like the Fijians we have here, Serial Lipo and that, to just never switch off on them. Otherwise, they'll just make something out of nothing, you know. They can do anything and they'll just come wherever. Hunter, I, I guess uh, through history, uh, Fiji against uh, the Samoan teams have been some of the most fierce matches in the Pacific. Do, do you feel that uh, yourself that there is a traditional rivalry between uh, Samoa and Fijians, or has that been diluted? Uh, yeah, obviously when those island teams clash, there's always going to be a physical battle. Everyone's trying to take out everyone and try and bash one another. But yeah, I'll say there's always that challenge there when it comes to the Pacific Islanders where the physicality has to be huge. Avantra, I thought you were pretty, uh, pretty unlucky to be seen being the other night. Uh, you, uh, you won't be changing your, um, your uh, what's the name, tackling style, will you? <laughs> Nah, I'll, I'll try and stick to my, my normal thing, you know, just try and make my tackles and for the boys and, yeah, and the team. How did it feel when you, you know, you're in your moment, you, you put that hit on and, and you got a hold of the guy? Like, did you feel like you had control the whole time and you never felt like it, it, it got out of your, I guess, um, safe parameters? Um, to be honest, I was more nervous, you know, for a big man running and especially a Fijian that can... It's got gas, foot step, and can step. I basically just try and do my best to to try and save a try or or anything. Were you surprised he came straight at you and didn't go past you? Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> 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 I was expecting everything. You know, he's a strong ball carrier. Good. He's he's quick. He's got good feet as well. You said before you were actually sort of happy for the break because. First game back for a while. Um, how do you feel getting that 70 minutes under the belt? And uh, it'll be a different tempo, as you've already sort of mentioned, taking on the Fijians. Like, are you ready to go out there and play 80 minutes of rugby against the Drua? Yeah, uh, that's, that's the goal to try and get through 80. You know, I, I, obviously, I was cramping the last week in the 50 of Mark, but uh, first game back, so hopefully it improves this week. Uh, Metaeli's one Fijian. Uh, we've got 15 on the field on the weekend. Uh, has there got to be that sort of uh, intensity of, of defence and concentration on defence to um, shut them down? Yeah, well, that, that comes across from 1 to 23 players in the squad. You know, we've got to bring that physicality to play against these teams like Fiji because they're, they're, they'll just never go away. They'll just keep coming and coming. Good resilience shown by the team the other night when you had, you know, you, was, you, know, you were in the bin and then uh, there was a sim beating in the first half as well. It's good, good sort of, you know, I guess you know, um, I guess character in the uh, squad? Yeah, no, boys stepped up and um, obviously we were down one man and the boys knew knew what to do when we were down one man. Obviously we practiced that during training and that and definitely paid off on the weekend. I saw um, Kenny O tying around at jet ski earlier. Is he worried that the water, the floods are going to come back or something? Oh, I think so. I'm surprised his dogs are not there too. So. Yeah, I'm not sure, but... Can, can he actually drive it? Can he actually ride it, or is he just told... He doesn't even have a licence. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even have a car licence either. <laughs> we'll give the cops on that. Um, nah, jokes. <laughs> uh, the, the Reds made a big call with putting uh, Jordan at uh, fullback. Uh, you've seen it take shape at training. What, what's your confidence in uh, Jordy uh, as a fullback, and what can he bring to the game? Um... Uh, Jordy's just one of those guys where you just let him do his thing, give him the ball. 
or just yeah, just get the ball in his hand so he can play around and and play his game and that. But we're, we're all excited and we're pumped for him to be at the back and to lead us from the back. Yeah. Do you expect there'll be a few, he'll create a few chances for guys like yourself and the other backs. Yeah, for sure. He'll obviously attract more than two, two to three defenders, and they'll leave gaps and holes for blokes like uh, me, Stroy, Fluky, and Rabs and that. Yeah. Ben, you noticed um, Albie Matheson is, is down here just as injury covers for Tatey. You know, he might not get to play, and he's probably spending a lot of time with the with the nines. But there's a guy who's he's played professional rugby mm. for you know well over a decade, and at some of the biggest clubs around the world. And what's what's he brought, and what does he sort of add when you just got a guy like that who's inserted into training? Yeah, obviously he trains like he's only 20, so he's in good nick as well, better than me, but. Obviously, it brings experience and um, like on and off the field as well. Like, and obviously for boys to go up to them, ask them a few questions, and where they can improve the, their game and that. You asked him how to uh, get yourself looking like that at 36. Yeah, I told him how do you run a Bronco 420 at that age? So. <laughs>